Now, it's another time of the year again where graduates here in Ghana have completed their mandatory one-year service. Their exit paves way for another batch of graduates onto the job scene. Those who were fortunate to have connections or proven themselves during the period are given a contract or put on probation. Now, thousands, however, who fail to fit into any of these categories return home and begin a frantic search for jobs. But for what job exactly? Indulge me this afternoon as I engage graduates and HR professionals, a career and job counsellor, as we discuss uh, this uh, bread and butter issue. Joining me via Zoom right now to start the conversation is uh, Daniel. He served as teaching assistant at Legon, uh, Joshua Worship Frimpong, and he's also served at Parliament. Many young Ghanaians are facing an inordinately tough time finding jobs despite having obtained university degrees. Why are we here? Senor Ajabing is also a labor consultant. He will be joining this conversation. Um, let, me let me start with um, worship. Worship, I want you to share your experience as a graduate and what it has to take you to search for that job, even after your national service. Well, thank you for having me. It's a privilege to be here. Am I loud and clear, please? Loud and clear, we can hear you. Thank you. Um, it's always exciting um, as a graduate when you're done with school, but it gets daunting when you think of the fact that you have to start preparing your part to securing your future. It becomes a big struggle and a hurdle for many young graduates because uh, many institutions do not give us exactly what the job market requires. We're literally saying that our educational system in the present day leaves a lot to, to be desired. I served in parliament and fortunately for a few experiences I had in school, for a few opportunities I took, and internships and doing some services, some volunteering services for some institutions. It afforded me the luxury to be able to learn some of the skills that our institutions would not give you. There's no lecture in the university that will take you through writing resume, writing CVs, proposals and all that. And these are some of the basic things that university students need to know and some of the things that many organizations use. I've engaged many of my friends who have been, who are done with their service and know, and you find out that these are basic things that you do not know. Assuming that after service, a company wants you and a company wants you to write a proposal, or a company wants you to do something. You realize that they cannot do it. And that is because they have gone to the school, they have learned their courses, they have read everything. But these basic things that would complement the things that they have learned, will complement the certificate and the degree that they have acquired are missing. And so our, our schools do prepare us. We cannot brush that off. But as to what exactly the job, the job market requires, it is a whole discussion that we need to have with our institutions, our educational institutions, so that they shape all those important things inside. You then get some of the students from Ashesi University, and you find that these students are very ahead of us in so many things, in terms of practicality, pragmatism, and all that. And I think that um, it's one of the things that if, all the other institutions are doing would help us a lot. Now, Ebo Daniel, who also served as teaching assistant at Legon, um, he's also here with us for this conversation. Ebo, what's your own experience? Thank you, Asha. Um, I side with uh, worship when he says that our educational system is uh, largely uh, theory based and not uh, practice uh, because. Uh, I have witnessed the same, and luckily for me, I had the opportunity of uh, studying elsewhere, and so I, I, I could uh, differentiate between the two. Um, over here, you realize that it is more about what you're able to produce at the end of the um, semester, at the end of the examination, uh, what you're able to produce, and uh, not necessarily uh, if you actually understand what you are doing. And so you, a lot of students tend to uh, memorize and then uh, you know, as we call it, chew and then pour it at the uh, time of examination. And that is a very bad practice because when you go out there for a job, they are not looking at uh, just your degree, 
uh, that you're a first class student or you're a second class upper student or any other. They're also looking at what competency, what you are bringing on the table. And most of the time, you find that a lot of students lack some of these skills. But luckily for me, um, just like uh, worship himself, whilst in school, I was also engaged in extra curricular activities. I have, I mean, I, I have done media a, a bit. I have also uh, volunteered with certain organizations uh, and whatnot. I've served in various leadership positions. And so, uh, I mean, even with that, you are not even assured of a job. So it, it, it begs the question of those who have nothing at all, uh, what happens to such people? So I, I think it's, uh, we need to take a second look at our uh, structure, curriculum, uh, at the university level and maybe make it more practical rather than theoretical. Let me bring in the HR practitioner. Um, now, I want you to tell me what does it uh, require uh, for our students in, in, I mean, for the job market, what should students of today have before they can fit into the job market? Are you referring to me? All right, so let me bring in Senor Jabin, who is a labor consultant. Uh, uh, Senor, let me put that same question to you. What does it require for the job market? What do students need, students of today need to be on the job market? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon to you and uh, the listeners. Um, I think that to answer that question, it will be much easier to look at it from what it is that employers look out for and what is it that the job market uh, is looking out for from students. And for, for me, from my perspective, you know, um, organizations in terms of their HR models these days, uh, contemporary HR uh, models require that, you know, um, something we call um, HR competency, uh, models is what is used, meaning that because of the uh, issues of cost and also efficiency, organizations want specific people with specific skills to fit specific jobs. Mm. So that job fit is very important. If you don't have the skill and knowledge and competency, meaning that you have the ability to be able to perform those specific duties, then it will be difficult for you to um, be um, competitive on the job market. Then again, um, there's what we call cost leadership, where employers are always trying to reduce costs. So employees who work diligently, efficiently, and are able to, you know, reduce costs are um, employees that would be um, would be re required from from on, on the job market. Then employers are looking for diligent people. Employers are looking for diligent people. Employers are looking for people with good conduct. Employers are looking for people with um, who are honest, and you find that some employers have, um, some entrepreneurial employers have, have, have uh, mentioned that employees are, are either lazy or they are, um, uh, what should I say, they, 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 they are either lazy or they are not committed to the job. They are not engaged, right? So these are some of the things that employers would look out for. So apart from the hard skills of knowledge, there is also the, the soft skills that employers look out for. And indeed, it is the soft, it is the soft skills that actually um, are more critical for employers than the hard skills, because certainly there are processes and procedures and structures systems in the workplace that would integrate and orient employees when they are, they are newly employed. So basically, um, in summary, that is what I can, I can say. And so clearly you'll find that from what the um, graduates are saying, 
And what I have just described to you, if you put it in context, you find that there is a clear disconnect. So there have been ways uh, that employers try to bridge the gap through uh, internship programs and through other um, programs that ensure that employees um, or, or graduates have, or, or students have what it takes to be able to fit the jobs on the job market. Sometimes you realize that the jobs are available, but people are just not fit to fit into those jobs immediately. And where organizations are in a hurry to fill those positions, then it is difficult to pick people they have to now train. So what then I can end with for just answering this part of, of your question is, Employ and students who start doing something while they are in school are the ones who win on the job market. So if some students, some students are involved in buying and selling, some of them are involved in um, some part-time jobs, some of them do some petty trading and other you know, um, activities on campus, they come out with that entrepreneurial um, outlook when they finish school, and they come out with the various kinds of skills that they can use to survive um, while even looking for jobs. So uh, I think that there's still that disconnect uh, that we can talk about, but essentially we need to really um, do something about making sure that people are um, employees and sorry, students are fit for the jobs that are available on the job market. Great. Yeah. So Prosper deals a lot with the youth. Uh, Prosper Tonye is with the Skills Hub Creator Youth Opportunity and Transformation Africa. Um, what do graduates do while waiting for the next move? Thank you for the opportunity. I think um, the most important thing that graduates need to do is to find out if they have the requisite skills that the, the job is requiring of them. And so if they don't have the skills, they need to go through some sort of job search trainings that will equip them with the right skills that the job demands of them. One of the things you see most of the graduates do is that whenever they are done with school, they effectively don't engage in networking activities. And so this kind of job search opportunity workshops provide them that access to network, to have their CVs looked at, to acquire the skills that are re really important. Uh, a little about a week ago, we celebrated the World Youth Skills Day, and that the most important thing that was hinted was to reimagine the youth skills, you know, reimagining the skills. What it means is that we should do away with the skills that really will be outmoded in a few years, you know. We should look at the skills that will be required. Also, tying that into the fact that COVID has really affected us a lot. And so there are skills that are really important that ties into acquiring technological skills, acquiring soft skills that will better position you ahead of those in the market. And so at the Youth Opportunity Transformation in Africa, what we seek to do is to provide young graduates who are just getting down with their national service now to get on to acquire job set skills, which is very important which is really happening at their end. So I'm very important. I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy that I stress the word networking. Networking in the sense that you are bringing a skill on board. You are bringing something on board that will benefit the other person, not when you're taking. I, I could recount back in school. Your most of our graduates who finished school came back, and one thing that sets them apart is because whilst they were in school, they participated in some sort of activities that gave them the opportunity to learn more about the industry they want to get into. And so job search skills workshops are very important. And one of them we have is, is, is in the coming weeks, which will be very important for graduates to participate in. That would help them sharpen the skills that they don't have. That will help them get to know a bit more about themselves in terms of self-assessment. And other things that they could also acquire will be being more emotionally intelligent on the job because right after a national service, most of them don't know what next. So what is very important for graduates to be doing now is to take advantage of networking events, 
that they can share what they've learned during their national service period. They can also engage with prospective organizations and tell them what they've acquired and how that skill will be relevant to the job. And so um, I would like to throw this challenge to all the graduates, especially those that are home now, to take advantage of our, a job search workshop that we intend to run on the 25th and 26th. This will give them uh, the rudiments they need to prep their CV to really refine it, to also find out the kind of job search tips that will be really helpful to them. They should connect with us to get more information that will be relevant for them. So then after they are done, they are getting their jobs they need, they are starting businesses because they've already acquired their skills whilst they were in school. And this is some of the things that I'd like to share light on. Uh, also on a job search are listening to you and I hope they're taking some tips from what she said but I want you to explain to me where are you with your job search let me start with you worship worship what has become of your job search well so um, I noted that while in school we had the opportunity to start one or two things and so we started uh, a foundation in school that is keenly tackling plastic waste issues in the country. Um, it would be noted that in the aftermath of COVID, we've had the plastic waste issues increase because several of the things that we've had to use in um, protecting and preventing the, the COVID-19 virus uh, have had to do with plastics. And so it has created a lot of issues that if we do not solve, we'll find problems. In, and that is what um, my organization is actually doing. I'm the executive director of it, and we are tackling it primarily Jamestown because many of these plastics that we consume and dispose of improperly get back into our water bodies and affect us. And so I'm opening up the organization to many of our graduates who are looking forward into doing something to transform the society that there's so many opportunities in some of these non-governmental organizations that can help you up your skill that can help you move forward. And it's not always about going to the, the clouded and overcrowded sections of our, of our economy, trying to fit in there when you know that there's a lot of issues there. We're open for you. If it has to do with volunteering, if it has to do with providing your services fully as a worker, we'll admit to you. And while we are going through the processes of recycling the plastic, increasing advocacy and creating more climate change generations in the future, we're looking forward to bettering our society. Ebo? You want to share with us what has become of your job search? It's a book kindly unmute for me. Okay. Um, yes, I applied to a number of organizations and um, yes, some of them you get the negative response, but well, luckily for me, just yesterday, um, I heard back from one of them and it was negative, although the job is not as sure, I think. Uh, it's it's well it's outside my field of study but I mean you make do with it especially looking at the scarcity of job uh, in our country so I, I think for me for now uh, it looks like there's some hope. All right so um, there's some hope and I wish you well in that job search hopefully tomorrow mm. you'll be telling us some good news from that but let me wrap up with you Senor um, on the way forward what's the, how well um do you think that we can tailor our courses to meet the demands of the world hello senor senor kindly unmute for me sorry so yes you can hear me now i'm sure great um this for me is a million dollar question really because um we will have to fully overhaul our entire education system and then um, focus, apart from the technical uh, knowledge and skills we imbibe in our students, also take um, cognizance of the soft skills that they would need to survive in the job market. I would also say that for final year students, um, while they spend some of their time to do um, the project works, that is the time they should be taking through some basic uh, management courses, especially for 
um, career management where they would go through processes to understand what um, how a, a good CV looks like, how they can develop their own CVs, how they can network. Apart from social networking, we call we we have professional networking, so that they can you know prepare the grounds to be able to integrate properly into the um, job market and also into industry. Final thing I would say is that final year in school should really be used to bridge the gap between so so that even if it's a program that really might not um, be able to have an, uh, a student easily get a job. The final year should be designed, or the final years, okay, courses should be designed such that it integrates and brings both industry and the students together. So that that year, um, the courses and the various activities that um, constitute the courses would make sure that the, the students are prepared for the job market. I'm the grateful final one, for your the time. The final, final one, of course. Okay, briefly for me. Is the National Service. Yes, so, so the National Service Program should really be used as the first year of work so that um, people who are posted for National Service, we should start doing categorization where people are posted to their fields of study so that um, we do not waste the National Service years as the case uh, may be. Uh, because currently, once they, they go into national service, uh, wherever they find that themselves, they, they find it more difficult to build on that to look for, you know, jobs that are fit into their um, areas of study. I'm grateful for your time. Senor Ebo Daniel and Prosper, I'm grateful that you joined the conversation.